amongst the fireworks in a series that never seems to disappoint and always impacts how these fan bases feel about their seasons. It's Kentucky and South Carolina. This place is absolutely rocking. And the Gamecocks, a different team at home, look to continue that momentum tonight. Circumstance continuing. We welcome you, Tom Hart, Jordan Rogers. We got Cole Kublik down on the field. Uh, well, everyone's worried about the college football playoffs for South Carolina. Their postseason playoff really starts tonight. They got two games left. They need two wins to make it to bowl eligibility, and that rival from the upstate waiting next week. Now they're a different team at home. They need to try to continue some of that mo momentum tonight as underdogs against the Cats. To find a little bit of that magic that they finished last season with upsetting yeah. Tennessee and Clemson. Spencer Rattler got really hot, but they are playing with their backs against the wall, needing these last two to get to bowl eligibility, like you said. And on the other side, Kentucky trying to figure out what kind of bowl they're going to go to. So two teams with a lot at stake tonight. I don't know if there's another quarterback who has produced like Spencer Rattler yet hasn't gotten the headlines in college football this season. All he's done is perform in the toughest league in college football. Missing pieces including an offensive line reinventing their backfield introducing new wide receivers and he hasn't skipped a beat. The journey has been unbelievable formerly a potential number one overall pick at Oklahoma the ups and downs of the offense last year culminating with a bang and how they finished in this year like you mentioned musical chairs at offensive line injuries all around him the consistent has been number seven the way he has played in adversity the way he's played from the pocket the improvements that he's made he's been fun to watch man. Kentucky would love to find some consistency what a start for this team five and zero to begin the season the run game was the backbone behind that big blue line and then the schedule got tougher they quit running the ball quite as effectively the wide receivers besieged by drops and everything went downhill fast. Yeah, and there's no magic pill, right, for this offense to get back to what we saw at the beginning of the year. They got to run the football well. It's got to be about Ray Davis. It's got to be about starting with the run, play action, pass off that. That's when they're best. We've seen them get down early in games. Last couple weeks, especially last week against Alabama, they need a fast start tonight, and they need it behind Ray Davis. We got to see some more of number one like we saw against Florida earlier in the year. It's always a party under the lights here at williams Bryce Stadium, but the environment owes a debt of gratitude to a finished DJ who created Sandstorm. South Carolina finally adopted it and made it their own, and it has made the pregame here in South Carolina, the entire game atmosphere, one that is unrivaled in college football. Darud is the DJ who founded, that was 99. Shortly thereafter, the folks at South Carolina says, let's do it here. For more on that with the celebrity in the building alongside Darude, here is DeCole. Darude, this entire fan base has adopted a song that you created. Did you ever imagine that an atmosphere could generate this kind of energy because of a song that you created? No, I mean, I've seen some songs do some damage, but uh, I didn't imagine it being mine. And uh, I don't I don't have words to say, but they're speaking for me right now. How does this make you feel? Just this atmosphere. It's insane. It's insane. It's insane. Here we go. Let's watch it. It's the biggest rave you've ever been a part of. Sit back, relax, enjoy his creation. This is Sandstorm. South Carolina won the toss. They've elected to defer, so Kentucky will put its offense on the field. Well, unless Shane Beamer has a trick up his sleeve early. 
What a scene here in Columbia. Mitch Jeter will get us started. Barry on Brown back to receive for the Cats. Welcome to SEC Saturday night. No return for Kentucky. The offense will operate with that student section right behind them under the direction of Devin Leary. Similar to Spencer Rattler on the other side, Devin Leary at his previous stop turned into a huge prospect. He was the ACC preseason player of the year two seasons ago. He has plenty of experience, though he dealt with injuries from a broken fibula to a torn pectoral muscle. He makes his 37th career start tonight. Yeah, and another guy like Spencer Rattler that came from a completely different system than what they're running here at Kentucky. So the learning curve has been a little steep. He's talented enough. They got to find some of that magic tonight. Ray Davis is his tailback. That's Brown in motion, and they'll keep it on the ground to start. And Debo Williams in on the tackle, his 95th of the season. Boy, Ray Davis, such a productive back. At every school he's been at, we'll get into that. He's been at three. This is his third stop. But they, this offense rises and falls with number one. We go right back to him. And Davis finds just a yard, so that'll set up third and five for Kentucky as Davis moves closer to 1,000 yard season. The 66 yards away. It's a reshuffled offensive line. No Kenneth Horsey tonight. Dylan Ray at left guard. Jagger Burton at right guard. Leary's completed 57% of his passes on the year. The wideouts seem to have solved the drop problem that plagued him in the first half of the season. Flag down, slant complete, stands as a first down as of now. But we'll see what the flag is about. And that is Isaiah Cummings with the catch for the Cats. Illegal shift on the offense. Two players moving at the same time. Five yard penalty. Replay for David Smith, the referee, loose a uh, look of exasperation from Mark Stoops and what has been a frustrating season. Kentucky needs the shifts and motions to try to create an advantage. No doubt. And so frustrating because a perfect play, perfect block, and throw by Devin Leary. Now you're in third and long, not where Kentucky wants to live. And it is third and loud. Man rush for the Cox. Leary steps out of the pocket, gets taken down. Could not escape the pocket. And Jordan Strong. Well, it's a good thought by Devin Leary. The slide protection is going to go to the left, which means Jeremy Flax is going to be one on one right here with Strong. It's just a great job of redirecting, finding out where the quarterback's going to go after the initial pass rush here, redirecting and getting just enough O'Leary to bring him down because there was some green grass in front of him there if Strong didn't get him. Wilson Berry to punt it away. The punt game has left Kentucky in a hole numerous times this season. It is Mario Anderson back to receive, and Kentucky having issues with personnel. Oh, Paul, what impact is the noise down there? there? I don't think that impacts you getting 11 players on the field for punt cover, but it is loud, obnoxiously loud. It's funny, I was talking to Darude right before you guys threw it down and I interviewed him, and he said, you know what, it's almost intimidating. And I said, trust me, buddy, for that other team, it is intimidating. Rattler getting loose, wanting to take the field. Special teams issue for the Cats. Well, I got this counter on here, so uh, let's use it. Yep, that's 10. You usually want to play with 11, Tom. Well, unless you're allowed Canada, to. Canada would be 12, but I don't know anywhere that plays with 10. There's a lot of emotion for Shane Beamer. This has been an interesting rivalry between the two head coaches the last couple of seasons. And the weight of this game on the perception of a season where the margins are so thin in this league makes it incredibly valuable to both sides. Jason Kilgore is the man to return the punt for Carolina. Not a good one. Kilgore lets it go and it takes a Kentucky hop. 
And here is Spencer Rattler after that 45 yard punt. Home is where the Rattler is for sure. Four and one with an 80% completion rate. 15 touchdowns and three picks. What's the difference? Well, he's comfortable here at home, right? But this offensive line, we talked about how many injuries. Last week, the first time this O-line started the same rotation two weeks in a row. When you're on the road trying to communicate and there's not continuity and it's loud, makes it hard. So at home, the communication and protection from the offensive line has been much better. And when that's the case, Rattler plays at extremely high level. They're tied for 123rd out of 133 in sacks allowed this season. But didn't get one up last week, and now procedure penalty against South Carolina with movement. False start, 51 on the offense, five-yard penalty. And it's trained by Milani, the freshman left tackle in South Carolina, immediately pointing at the Kentucky defensive line, insinuating, my guess, is that they were simulating the snap count. Nick Gargiulo, the transfer from Yale, is the center. And Rattler backed up now first and 15. We have two scholarship running backs tonight, so they are light in the backfield. Here's Amari and Brown. And he gets seven yards back. What makes Spencer Rattler so good? Well, he's seeing the game so well. I think last year blitzes would catch him off guard. Now he sees it before it happens, so he's able to get the ball out really quick, like you saw right there to Amari and Brown. Pressure from the edge. Rattler flips it out and finds Mario Anderson, who Steps for the first down. And the Gamecocks will move the chain. Well, the go-to guy for Spencer Rattler has been Xavier Leggett, one of the best receivers in the entire country, 6'3", 227 pounds. He is a matchup problem, and he's going to be matched up a lot tonight with Andrew Phillips, corner to the field, who's back in the lineup for Kentucky. Rattler's got to leave the pocket, and that is off the fingertips of Anderson, and Leggett still nearly got to it. I'll leave him with third and ten. Zabel again has turned himself into one of the best prospects at wide receiver in this league, if not in the country, and it's all development. Oh, it's a it's a great story of when worth that work ethic meets opportunity. He was the tenth leading receiver on this roster last year. Now Amazing. second in the SEC. It is second and ten as Joshua Simon motions. And Anderson finds a hole before quickly getting wrapped up by Deion Walker. And they continue all the way to the ground, way back in the backfield. Soft round of Detroit City. What a play by Walker. He's a handful. Yeah, he's a guy they're going to have to know where he is at all times. A lot of times, the stats really don't reflect his impact on the game. He's not filling up the stat sheet with tackles, even though he got one there. Or quarterback hurries. He's got a bunch of them, but he impacts the game by eating up double teams and forcing the protection to know where he is at all times. He might be the biggest best bowler you've ever seen. As high as 285 got third and seven now for South Carolina. Rattler. On a dime to Leggett for his first grab. Covered by Andrew Phillips. Yeah, and actually that time Andrew Phillips followed Leggett from one side of the field to the other. So a little man-to-man -man matchup, not usually what Kentucky does. They're much more of a zone team, but it looks like they like Andrew Phillips on Leggett that time. Great route and even better ball placement from Rattler. Phillips was not on the field last week for Kentucky in their loss to Alabama. He may be less than 100% tonight. A little swing pass. Anderson dropped it. Might be a live football. It was a lateral and it's quickly covered by Simon. The difference would be yardage on second down, and they say it was indeed. And once again, second and long for South Carolina. The ruling on the field was the pass is backwards, recovered by South Carolina. Yeah, I don't think that's right. Second down. I agree with you. I got an angle here. That looks, I mean, just maybe a foot or two ahead. Yeah. You see, that's definitely not backwards. That should be an incomplete pass, and they should get those yards back. And they'll get buzzed down from the replay booth. Or Shane Beamer used a timeout to make sure they get a nice long look at it. That's a four pass, he said. Lip reading skills are on point early on. So I was saying down the line, it looked like it was just directly where he released it, where it was caught. So since it was called backwards on the field, I think they didn't have enough to prove that definitely 
was a forward pass. So that little gray area there. It was a booth initiated review, so South Carolina has not charged a timeout. And again, Cox left with a second and 15. And in play action, Rattler trying to fit it to Anderson. What a catch! He was blanketed by Trevin Wallace. Good hands by the former Division II star from Newberry College. Yeah, Anderson, great running back. Not really known for hands like this, but watch this snag. Back behind him a little bit. Great coverage by Trevin Wallace, and that is it's a big-time catch there. Eighth play of the opening drive for South Carolina after forcing Kentucky to punt. Third down, 11. Pressure coming. Rattler escapes it. Now on the run. It's going to try and run for the first down, and he will. There's a flag down in the secondary. He's been sacked 36 times this season, fourth most in the FBS. Holding on the defense, number 23. Samuel Phillips will be added to the end of the run. First down. That's Andrew Phillips who got flagged. That Phillips working his way back from a hamstring injury that caused him to miss last week against Alabama. That time, out of contact there with Amarion Brown. One of the reasons Mario Anderson's been able to make his way into the lineup, you saw him solid in pass pro right there. Yeah. They're missing some key pieces, including the carry on Joyner. Not available tonight. Rattler able to complete another. This is Joshua Simon. Rattler's been at his best early on. Leads the country in completion percentage in the first quarter at 84%. Yeah, and at his best when they change the launch point. What does that mean? Well, normally as a quarterback, when you drop back, you drop back straight over the center, whether it's a three-step, five-step, no-step. When you change the launch point, you send the offensive line one way, and the quarterback will reset, maybe over where a tackle was, trying to get distance from that defensive line, exactly what they did there. They're going to go with a wildcat, and that turns into a first down run for Lenora Sellers. Listed as the third string quarterback behind Doty. They've got high expectations for this young man. Oh, such a great athlete. Offensive coordinator Dow Loggins mentioned we're going to have some for him, right? I mean, they only have two scholarship running backs and really one in Mario Anderson, the other a true freshman. So we're going to see some guys, maybe Sellers a little bit more, maybe some Xavier Leggett or Joshua Simon, the tight end that's athletic. All of them may have a part in the backfield today to make up for the injuries at running back. Simon motioned. Rattler goes to the end zone wide open. It's Xavier Leggett. These two are as in sync as any tandem in the SEC. That is the sixth touchdown of the season for Leggett. And caps an 11 play 69 yard drive. Mitch Jeter for the point after. Great hold by Kai Kroger. A determined drive for Spencer Rattler in the game cup. Yeah, I said this was going to be a matchup to watch. Xavier Leggett on Andrew Phillips. Watch the double move right here. He's going to press up, give a little step inside, loses Phillips, and a perfect ball by Spencer Rattler. South Carolina on the board early. Carolina. And now Xavier Leggett has developed into one of those 1,000 yard receivers. Over 1,100 on the season. And that touchdown getting South Carolina on the board. What a scene here. They have DeRue, DeRue in the DJ booth in the cockpit. No return for Kentucky. And it brings Devin Leary back out again with it. <laughs> Look, my man, I'm suddenly in the mood for a glow stick. You're, you're a big rave guy? I am now. Big EDM guy? Uh -huh. I am now, too. How could you not be? This crowd is electric and derude. 
He's probably like, I can get used to this. I was wondering why there's so many football players at his music festival tonight. Kentucky tried to establish the run on its first possession, went three and out. And now, Leary on play action. And nearly picked. That's Nick Emanwuri, who was able to jump the route. Boy, South Carolina coming to this 3 3 5 look. They've been doing a lot more of the last couple games. Trying to help sure up the protection on the back end. Really an umbrella coverage will break it down a little bit, but one way to try to help out this secondary in that time, Eman Worry all over Devin Leary's eyes. He stared that one down. Second and ten. And Davis able to pick up positive yardage for the flag. Personal foul, face mask, number 73 on the offense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal in spot of the foul. Replay second That's half. That's Dylan Ray who's flipped the left guard. Well, here's this 3-3-5. Look at three down linemen, and look at these three safeties right here. They really just want to keep everything in front of them. Umbrella-type coverage on the back end. They're playing a preset drop hole two, a cover two concept. Three safeties playing deep, three B linemen. They really started doing that against Jacksonville State and a lot last week against Vandy, but really haven't seen it at all this season besides the last couple weeks. Second and 22. And Larry incomplete. Cole. Well, Shane Beamer told me before the game, it's not going to be our base defense, but we will be in it a lot. And he said most of it is because 14 Jaron Willis and 22 Van Martin Scott had been so good in practice and so good on the scout team earlier in the season that they earned playing time. He said we've got to find a way to get these two on the field. They want to allow the defensive line to attack instead of read and try to hold the point. And plus 14 and 22 playing good ball wants to get them involved. Third and 22. Little bit high and incomplete. Leary off the mark tonight. That was Tavion Robinson, the intended receiver. And now the catch having to punt it away. Cole talking about getting guys involved from a health standpoint. This is a really beat up South Carolina team. And the longer they can hang in games, well, the more momentum they're going to pick up. Wilson buried a punt it away. Beamer ball has been a core for the entire Beamer family. And Shane has done a great job repeating it here at South Carolina. And they sent nearly everybody that time. Fair catch taken at the 44-yard line. Let's break down Spencer Rattler's game. Yeah, we talked about changing the launch point, a way to find him space and get protection shirt up, clean things up in front of him. You see that he's going to change the launch point over the left tackle and only one defensive lineman then. Everybody else goes to the right. And then when they haven't done that, this has been the improvement of Spencer Rattler. Not scrambling to run, but scrambling to step back up into the pocket, being strong in the pocket, and then finding ways to hit receivers downfield. Here you go. That's a great example earlier. Changing the launch point, getting outside the pocket, away from the noise, making things easier on this offensive line. 37 sacks the first nine games. O-line was perfect against Vandy in that regard. There's Xavier Leggett again, and just shy of the first down. Rattler has been under pressure a ton. Sacked fourth most in the FBS. And his quarterback rating dropped to under 25 when they bring heat. Only problem for Kentucky, they're not really built to do that this year. Here's Leggett on the handle, and he picks up a first down. And there's one of those plays where Xavier Leggett actually lined up at running back again. Two scholarship running backs is all South Carolina has, so 
They're going to be mixing guys in there, finding ways to get their playmakers the ball as much as possible tonight. It was an 11-play drive to open the scoring for South Carolina. Now they're trying to grind out another. Rattler on a dime complete to Nick Harbour. The promising freshman with a gain of 18. Boy, in the trust that Spencer Rattler has had in Nick Harbour as he's developing. He's got all the talent in the world, but his hands have been a little hit or miss. Not a natural catcher of the football, but great hands here and a great rip by Spencer Rattler in the soft part of his own coverage. He's got world-class speed and size, and here's Deion Walker to swallow up another. That's Mario Anderson tackle behind the line of scrimmage. You look at what South Carolina is missing. It's easier to understand the four and six record. They've lost six offensive linemen for the season. Juice Wells hasn't played since mid-September. And carry on Joyner, Juju McDowell out, and O'Donnell Fortune is unavailable tonight. Non-injury status for South Carolina, the defensive back, but most of those on the offensive side. Trey Knox is back. Tight end motions. Here's Rattler on the roll. A little pump fake to buy some time. Did not slide and he got crushed. Keaton Wade came flying in for the tackle. Just a little sprint left. Again, trying to get Spencer Rattler out of the pocket. That one you might just want to throw 10 rows up. <laughs> Save a hit, right? Or slide three steps earlier. Yeah, totally. Eight of nine start for Rattler. Heisman favorite just a couple of seasons ago at Oklahoma. Lost the starting job there, transferred to South Carolina, and really hit his stride in the last third of the season last year. Not a great snap. Stays with it. And now looking for a block and a scramble, and he'll run for another first down. We talk about his arm. How about the legs? Well, again, the Spencer Rattler of last year would have escaped outside the pocket backwards. The Spencer Rattler of this year, eyes downfield, steps up through the pocket, and then the last resort is taken off and using his legs. And a great decision right there, and he's letting Lovett know it. Jordan Lovett on the field for Kentucky. He was questionable coming into this game. They've been banged up on the back end of that secondary. Anderson going to get a shot. Deion Walker grabbed him immediately. Cole, Deion Walker is a load up front for the Cats. He really is. And when you guys were talking about him earlier, the one thing that stuck out that you didn't mention in that conversation was how he follows plays. When he's the backside defensive end or defensive tackle, he tracks plays extremely well, stays with them. You saw that play needed to hit the other direction, but Deion Walker did not allow for the cutback. First team freshman All-American last season for the Cats, the first for the program since Benny Snell in 2016. Rattler redirected out of the pocket again. Pump fake to buy a few yards, and he sidesteps pass to pick up the first down before J.J. Weaver got him. And there is some chatter now with Maxwell Harrison. Rattler has always exuded an outward confidence but it's the maturity that's taken his game to a new level this year. Well, I'll tell you what, he woke up and he chose violence tonight. <laughs> there is no sliding in his repertoire. And uh, there's some there's some good chatter going on down there right now. I love it. Lenore Sellers back in at quarterback. Ran it last time. And Sellers is going to run it again. Trying to find vision. And we're going to flag down as he took it inside the one. Holding yeah. number 23 on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. That's a freshman running back, DJ Braswell. They've had to press him into service here late in the year. And that's a challenge you get with playing young players, right? Yeah, yeah. With a couple of your veterans, a couple of your better running backs out. But this this is the part you love. A little bit of coaching there, a coaching moment for a young player. Ontario Hardesty. Former standout at Tennessee, the running backs coach here at Carolina. They're going to split out Rattler again and go with Sellers again. 
Sellers fakes the throw and on the design draw, able to pick up five. Spencer Rattler, 8 of 9 for 77 yards and a touchdown here early on. Carolina dominating the plays. They've won run 20 to Kentucky's 6. And you see the results in the yardage difference. Rattler pulls it back, having to think about it. Now on the run. And he goes tumbling down. After a gain of one, it stayed in bounds. And that will leave third and goal. Yeah, good job by Kentucky there. They dropped eight. So only rush three, no window, nowhere to throw the ball for Spencer Rattler. What do we make of Rattler's willingness to take these hits tonight? I mean, they're four and six. They got to win two to get to a bowl. I mean, I think he's in the mindset as well as this team in the mindset that you leave everything out there tonight. They are perfect on third down so far tonight through two drives. Pocket holds, end zone shot, and it's batted away by Derek Jackson. And Cole, isn't it interesting that when Derek Jackson came to the sideline after that last drive, Brad White found him as the first player he wanted to coach up. Brad White was almost out on the numbers, went right to 54, had a lot of coaching points for him. They spoke for about a good two, three minutes before he actually went back over to the bench area, Tom. So South Carolina on fourth and goal. 23-yard attempt now for Mitch Jeter. 11 of 13 on the season. And Jeter drills it. It was a line drive. It is a 10 nothing lead for South Carolina here in Soda City. And what a night at Williams Bryce. All right, Dari, thanks. It's going to be chilly and rainy before that one finishes in Como. It is beautiful weather here in the other Columbia tonight. Temperatures in the 60s under the lights here in Columbia. And this kickoff from Jeter will have a chance to be fielded on the ground ball. It's Barry on Brown. Looking for a C. Couldn't get past the kicker. And he takes it to the 25 yard line. <laughs> Kentucky has only run six plays of the night. They have yet to cross midfield. South Carolina has already run 15 plays in Cats territory. That's a little bit of the same story from last week. They ran four plays, and Alabama had 21 points. So that's not good. Starting slow, especially on the road is so tough. They got to get things going here. It starts on first down. Get a positive play. Can't be living in second and third and long with how this offense operates. Hand it off. Simo Kongbe straight up the gut picks up a few and that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. It is an emotional night. Here at Williams Bryce Stadium, Spencer Rattler letting his game and his mouth do the talking. Coach Beamer, the usage of different players on your roster is kind of like sandstorm in the stadium. It never stops. You just, you just keep going. You have two new guys playing linebacker on defense. Xavier Leggett in the backfield on offense. Is that just something that has to happen for this team to win these last two games? Yeah, we uh, trying to get our best players on the field, first of all. That gives us the best chance to win each week. Uh, offensively, it's just with the injuries. You know, we're down. To, we only got two scholarship running backs tonight. And uh, Mario's a workhorse, but we can't expect him to be out there every time. So we got to mix it up with Leggett. Uh, Josh Simon, we got all kinds of fun stuff in our pockets tonight. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Michael, right, thanks. Meanwhile, Cats will pick up their first first down of the night. On the defense, number one, 15 yard penalty from the previous one. It is DQ Smith colliding with Barryon Brown for the pass interference flag. Yeah, Barryon's a guy they got to get more involved. He had a quiet day yet last week against Alabama. They love the one-on-one -on -one matchup. He's probably their most dynamic receiver. He's a game changer when they get the ball in his hands. But last week, just two receptions, three yards, had one carry for seven yards. He's got to get five, six, seven touches here in the first half. This receiving court still fifth worst in the country in drop rate, but they've really cleaned it up. Brown and Key especially relative 
with her abhorrent starts with the hands. Play action. Larry going deep. Pass coverage. And it is incomplete. Brown had a step but couldn't haul it in. Boy, I love the idea. Deep play action pass to the guy we were just talking about, Barry on Brown, the fastest guy on their roster. And this one just about a foot out of the reach. Working on true freshman Jalen Kilgore there, number 24. That's actually a really good ball. That's one that just, you're a foot off from a huge play. I don't know if Brown is catching his breath or banged up his shoulder on the drive. He's in the sideline for this second and 10. And the Cats swing it out to Anthony Brown Stevens. Freshman just shy of the first down. That'll leave third and short. Demi Sumo Karnbe has seen plenty of time in the backfield tonight, which is interesting for the Cats. Ray Davis came in second in the SEC in Russia. He's on the bench for this third and short. Simo Karnbe steps through the hole and picks up the first down. Boy, watch the block here by Josh Caddis, the tight end. Number 84 pulling across. You're going to see here pulling across and getting a big kick out block right there on 22 to give Karnbe the space. Lee Flicker, Larry deep down the middle again and overshot him again. This was Brown Stevens this time. The opportunities are there against the Carolina secondary. Boy, in this one, Devin Leary just rushes, right? I, I know as a quarterback on a flea flicker, everything's moving a little bit fast, but watch how quickly he catches this and throws it. If he just waits a second, he can put a little more air on this, and he's got him. He's got Brown Steven running down the field. I think he just rushed that a little bit. Jordan, you mentioned that new defense South Carolina running. Liam Cohen told me before the game, I got a flea flicker I want to try early, but I really need to see what they're going to give me on the back end. Got the look he wanted. Ball start on Kentucky. Ball start, 84 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. That's Josh Caddis, by the way. Kentucky missing tight end Jordan Dingle tonight. He was banged up in the Alabama game and is unavailable to go with the offensive line shakeup up front. Cohen really credited the tight ends for having a solid game against Alabama, but the hesitation was I don't know that anybody in a unit really had a great game. That was an Alabama blowout and another loss to a top 10 opponent. On second and 15, over the middle, nice catch and good footwork by Tavion Robinson out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. Boy, and this is this is the tough part about watching this Kentucky offense is that when Leary looks good, man, he looks good. I mean, that was a rip right there on a dig route, right in the window to Tavion Robinson. I mean, watch the watch this little sidearm rip, bam, right on the money, right in tight coverage. It's just hit or miss yeah. on that accuracy, especially intermediate for Devin Leary. Swings it out to Brown this time. What role for a quarterback like Devin Leary does velocity play in accuracy? Oh, it's huge. Uh, and when you watch Devin, a lot of times, it looks like he's trying to throw it as hard as he can, right? And so the harder you're trying to throw it, the faster that ball is moving, the smaller the margin for error. And I think that's what you see. I mean, when the ball's moving that fast, if you're off by a few feet, that's tough for a receiver. Yeah. As opposed to a little more touch on it. It's just how guys are built, though. I was really excited. We talked to him this week about the decision to come to Kentucky and the opportunity to play in this offense. Pressure up the middle. Larry goes down the sideline into coverage, and it is dropped by Barry on Brown. Who did everything right before the ball got to him. Working against the freshman Judge Collier. Boy, what I say, got to get him five or six touches. Liam Cohen is trying. He loves the matchup that Barryon has one-on-one. -on -one. Just can't pull that one down. Great ball by Leary. And 
drops have plagued this team. Five drops the first five games for Brown just won the last five. Third and long. Leary on a line. The completion to Isaiah Cummings. Oh, this is a great throw. It's a corner route in soft cover, too. The flat corner, you can see, is getting a ton of depth. I mean, that ball has to be on a level two, right? Not a line drive. We just talked about it. Putting yep. a little touch on that. He did it that time, and that was a perfect throw. So a fresh set of downs. This is the 10th play of this drive for Kentucky. Leary looking the flat, now goes over the middle, it's spatted down. Cole, there's a very interesting relationship always between a center and his quarterback, but Eli Cox for Kentucky has taken on a lot of responsibility up front, taking that off of Leary's shoulder. Yeah, there's no doubt. I talked to Liam Cohen before the game. I said, how much is on Eli Cox? Because it looks like he directs a lot of traffic before the snap, but he said all of it. He's got all of our protection stuff. They had some issues with some IDs or point linebackers who basically designates where you start your assignments from a week ago against Alabama. But Tom, Eli Cox has all of it. You'll see him reach around a couple different times this game just trying to direct things and trying to help his quarterback out. Senior from Nicholasville, Kentucky. Larry hands it off to Ray Davis, who's back in the game and is able to pick up five before Nick Eman Word brings him down. And Davis, just like that, is back out of the game. No, no, he's not. Thought he was. Really interesting, the second leading rusher in the SEC, only seeing limited time tonight. He has been up and down this season and the last few games has really struggled to find that same production he had in the first half of the year. Third down five. Davis picks up the blitz into the end zone for the score and Barry on Brown. Seven yard strike from Leary. Just a great throw. We mentioned the touch, right? Saw the touch on a corner route and cover two this time. Again, taking a little bit off that fastball. Getting it up over the line of scrimmage. And Barry on Brown won that route the whole way. Well, it was great to see him convert that because two plays earlier, Josh Caddis tied in wide open in the end zone on that batted ball. Would have been a big loss if they didn't convert for a touchdown there. Leary is only 5 for 12 through the air. Ray Davis hasn't done anything yet. Kentucky keeping pace with South Carolina down only three. Cole, what do you got on Ray Davis? Well, one of the areas he has helped this football team, not just tonight, but this season, has been in pass protection. You mentioned Eli Cox directing traffic, a nice redirect by Davis to come back into the A-gap, help pick up that linebacker to give Leary just enough time to deliver that touchdown pass. Charcuterie is off the charts, too. <laughs> it was. Almost snagged a couple that were left over there. Ten seven, South Carolina with the lead. Let's take a look at Fansville brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Someday I want to be in the zone that DeBrood is in here. In the mid say he is flat feeling it. Created sandstorm and reaping the benefits. Finished translation for Goosebumps is Hot Him Poopah, and that's what he's got tonight. Wow, that's a great pull by you. Thank you, Google. Too many people believe it, though. Also, the Soul Patch coming back? <laughs> he's bringing it back. <laughs> if anybody can, it's Darude. Here's Mario Anderson bouncing off of dudes up front for the Cats. That is a big defensive line, Josiah Hayes and Deion Walker both making some noise up front today. Yeah, and this is where this Kentucky defensive front and really 
what we're used to seeing from Kentucky, the physicality has got to take over. They have to make South Carolina in this offense completely one dimensional. Try to force Spencer Rattler into a bad decision. And then one yet tonight, he's 8 of 10. Leaves the pocket again. What a move! Went Ole on him, and he dives forward to turn what could have been a loss or a minimal gain into a pickup of seven. He's averaging seven and a half yards a carry. Well, Brad White said, look, he's not a Jalen Milrow type, but he's a little bit more like Brady Cook. Mobile in the pocket can make you miss. And boy, Spencer's cooking right now in the pocket. Nice crossover, third down three. Hit him with the boom bottom. He did. Pressure from the edge. Rattler, dangerous pass. Broken up by Maxwell Hairston. That for fifth in program history in interception return yards. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. Dow Loggins mentioned, look, four or five of their best players for Kentucky all play to the boundary. You want to try to throw to the field and run to the field as much as possible. That time, a little bit of a hesitation by Spencer Rattler. Looked away, then came back to it. and. Can't do it against Maxwell Hairston. Interception machine. Here's Kai Kroger, great punter. Also a very effective passer in his career. Seven of eight on fakes. And the lefty on a great kick here. He was booming on pregame. And that one will check up right at the 30. We've got a three-point game second quarter from Columbia. Entertaining side story last year, but talking with both head coaches, hey, water under the bridge now. Shane's like, man, I reached out to him a ton since last year. I feel like we're pretty good buddies now. Yeah, a little this normal pre -game. interaction pregame. Some smiles, but you know, deep down, there's still a little <laughs> bit of, yeah, they want to beat each other. Listen, old school on the left, new school on the right. Totally. And, and that's. It's not right or wrong. Line. It's just they both been able to build something. Uh-oh. Big hole for Ramon Jefferson, who was magnificent in a run against Alabama last week. The former Maine Black Bear whips off a first down run. I thought it was interesting talking to Shane Beamer. He kept mentioning, we got to get back to having fun, right? When you're on a losing streak and injuries are everywhere on the field he's like we stopped showing highlights in the facility now everything that runs on the tv 24 7 is just guys celebrating guys having fun right he wants his team to embody that and they got tough two games here to try to get bowl eligible but trying to get some of the the good vibes back in the building south carolina picked up a fumble on a bad play to start the game last year never looked back Leary has to scramble. He's got the entire field now. Whoa, he got leveled on the slide. That'll bring a flag. Debo Williams delivered the hit and plenty of pushing and shoving afterwards. Alex Huntley, not shy, got in there. I, I think Debo's challenge here was when was the slide started? And, and that's what he's trying to claim. He slid too late. Now, Targeting doesn't care if you slid too late. Boy, last couple of weeks, Devin Leary has been banged up. Banged up against Mississippi State, banged up a little bit against Alabama, and took a huge hit there. Dead ball, personal foul, unnecessary, unnecessary roughness, number zero on the defense. 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. We're going to go to break, by the way. The replay room can put targeting on if they think it was, if they see it on tape. But that is not the call here. They tend to Devin Leary on the field. Mark Stoops stating his case. Leary has had to deal with injuries left and right over the years. Torn pectoral muscle at NC State and a broken fibula in another game early in his career. And he's still being tended to by the athletic training staff. This is the hit. Be back in a moment. On Devin Leary and deemed it was not targeting. But because the quarterback had given himself up and was defenseless, then 
It is a 15 yard penalty. Yeah, so because he's defenseless, targeting would be forcible contact to the head or neck area, so they deemed it was a little lower than that. And as you saw, a little more of the side of the helmet, not quite the top where the crown is. So Kaya Sharon is in the game now for Kentucky. Leary back in the tent for the Cats, and he will hand it off. And here's Ramon Jefferson again. And all he does is bite off big chunks. Grew up in the Bronx, was recruited by Liam Cohen. Cohen was in Maine, and now Leary asking if he can get back in, and they said, go back over there. They're testing him out and continuing to get some runs in. Ramon Jefferson getting an opportunity tonight. Seventh season of college football. A stop at Sam Houston State with the Bearcats in between the Maine and Kentucky stints. Coming back from a knee injury last year. And that is incomplete to Brown, and that was backwards. And Shane Beamer saying, Why haven't you guys marked it back there? They ruled it incomplete. Ooh, that is a whiff. Definitely backwards. Now, what a huge difference it is. It leaves. The second and two. Is under further review, the on the field as the pass was and now they and will review it. Yeah, this little RPO, so Kaya Sharon decides to pull it, throw the bubble route, but man, first throw in a game, cold off the bench, short arms it a little bit, and that's definitely backwards, so that's gonna put him at the 26. And that's going to make it closer to third and eight instead of third and two. Well, that changes your play call a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Especially with Devin Leary, who's back in the huddle, back on the field after taking that huge hit a couple of plays ago. Let's take it back. I'm sorry. That was Sharon who was back in the huddle. So replay does its job, correcting the mistake. We assume. Here's the announcement. Got to wait for the DJ to stop playing before the announcement. After video review, the pass was backwards. The ball will be placed on the 26 yard line. Third down. Yeah, maybe a little more time for Devin Leary, yeah. To feel ready to head back in there. As Liam Cohen relays the play. They'll make it third and nine. Kentucky three of five on third downs tonight. Leary looking for Dane Key. Now he goes the opposite way. That's caught for a first down by Barry on Brown, who spun free but stepped out at the nine. A huge conversion on a pickup of 17. Boy, and it's a great block by Ray Davis, I believe. Yeah, watch this pickup right here on a blitz. Debo Sam will come right down the middle. Debo Williams, excuse me, right down the middle. Ray Davis cuts him down, gives Devin Leary just enough time. And again, another great touch throw there by Devin Leary right over Kilgore to Barry and Brown. So that puts Barry and Brown over a thousand yards receiving in his career. The previous play is under further review, ruining the spot on the sideline. They want to see exactly where Brown went out of bounds. See if his foot steps out right as he spins. Right there. Oh, I think the heel was up on that yeah. one. Yeah. And oh, maybe right down there. on that one. Yeah. And that's where he was originally ruled to have stepped out on the field. Let's see, right toe down is that heel? Oh, I don't know. That heel might come down a little bit in the white there. Boy, that's tough to tell, huh? Matter of uh, four yards or so.
After video review, the runner stepped out of bounds at the 12-yard line. It will be first and 10 at that spot. Well, the replay folks are earning their keep tonight. Yeah, they are. Tell you what, it, we've mentioned it a couple times. Really interesting watching the use of Ray Davis. Again, second in the SEC in yards. Hasn't been great. The running game hasn't been great in general the last couple of weeks, but came in on pass pro and then back out. Right? And they've, they've much more leaned towards Carm Bay and Jefferson at times when they're handing the ball off. Jefferson is 3,000 career yards to his name, his various stops. And he slipped trying to make a cut in the backfield. Talking to Liam Cohen about his recruitment of Ramon Jefferson in the Bronx with the Co-op City, which has produced some incredible talent, guys like Curtis Blow and Rod Strickland, Chris Canty, and Queen Latifah. I mean, that is about as versatile as you can get. Queen Latifah. Uh-huh. Covered every spot of that map. Yeah. At a Truman High School in the Bronx. What a rise for Liam Cohen from Maine to the NFL to Kentucky and back again after a couple of stints with the Rams. Second and long. Into the end zone. Contested and taken away. Nicky Manwari with the interception for South Carolina. He wants to keep running. He's never going to give that ball up. First interception for the sophomore from Irma. Leary watching the replay on the big board. Just a hair under thrown, and he meant where he made the play. Yeah, trying to find Isaiah Cummings in for the injured Jordan Dingle in the 6'3. Eman Wari does a great job undercutting the corner route and using that height to climb the ladder. And a huge turnover for South Carolina. Well, South Carolina desperate to find two wins to close the season and make it to a bowl. And Nick Eman Wari doing all he can. And he took it all the way to the crowd. What would we call the Lambeau leap here? The Darude leap tonight. <laughs> yeah. Rattler able to complete it on first down to Trey Knox. Arkansas transfer. Great visit with Trey here in the stadium yesterday. Well, he's a big dude, 6'5", 240. Well, he's put together well. And maybe one of the most surprising pieces of information we've gotten all year. Oh, we'll wait for that. Leggett with a change of direction in the backfield. Trying to do it again. And he won't survive. Gets taken down finally by Trevor Wallace. It's a loss of 17 yards. Well, when you play running back a lot and Leggett doesn't, again, he's going to get a lot more touches in the backfield because of how banged up South Carolina is. But you can reverse field once, twice, Never works, especially with Trevin Wallace on the other side. I don't know. Cole did a U-turn on Gervais twice. Well, Cole's a crazy driver. You never trust him. Define crazy. Well, speed limits are more like guidelines. Third and Sumter here for the Gamecocks. Kentucky drops eight. An initial hit on Knox. All right, Cole, finish the, the Trey Knox teams. Well, he, Tom, you were just talking to him about his career and coming to South Carolina, and I said that transition to tight end at Arkansas, I said, it, it, it feel like it's all played out now. He said, yeah, it was rough in the beginning. Coach Pittman kind of fought it. And I was like, yeah, most guys don't like moving inside. He goes, no, 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 no. They wanted me to stay outside. I wanted to go inside. I wanted to play tight end. I welcome the physicality. Shane Beamer also telling us, you can't get the kid off the practice field. He wants to be at every drill, every rep, all the time. He also wants your job once he's done playing. You're probably going to get it. Got better hair. Fourth and 18 to punt it away. Tamian Robinson in midfield. Over the shoulder. Trying to make something happen. And he went the wrong way on Yuji. Let's get to the studio. Here's Dari.
Watson, myself, will update what Florida and Missouri are doing right now up in Como, a place you're obviously familiar with. Alabama rolls, Georgia rolls. What do you see so far here? Feels like Kentucky weathered the storm early on, and now the momentum seems to be on their side. Yes, I'll come on playing like a team that wants to win these two games and make it. We will see you all shortly, guys. All right, thanks, gentlemen. Yeah, the desire for South Carolina to finish strong and make a bowl incredibly strong with the reps that they have the opportunity to get young players on both sides of the ball. Both of these teams have a rival lurking next week. Here's Ray Davis. Davis against Florida went for a career high 280 yards and three touchdowns and 26 carries. It's like Kentucky just hasn't been able to replicate that performance. No, they really haven't. And to the point of South Carolina and the urgency to get to a bowl, Kentucky had high aspirations. Oh, yeah. A 10 win season above that. So how do you re-motivate yourself and reset those goals to go, hey, we're bowl eligible, but what kind of bowl and how do you want to finish the season? Motivation much different on either side for both these teams. Well, on second five, it's Davis with that high snap. He's taken out by the hustling TJ Sanders. Out of Marion, South Carolina. Great high school basketball player for the Swamp Foxes. Third and two. Larry looking for the slant, and he's able to find Dane Key. Reverses direction, lost the football. Taken away by the Gamecocks and DQ Smith. It ends up in the hands of Emory Floyd eventually, but Jalen Kilgore forced it out. And we got flags on the field. South Carolina's defense providing momentum. The email worry pick. And now the fumble recovery. Against the South Carolina bench. I don't think Shane Beamer is going to mind him. A bench warning where they can play with momentum like this. Well, this just this just cannot happen. A great read, double slants to the field. Devin Leary works inside to the slant first, not there. Goes to Dane Key on the outside. Great job spinning out of that, getting yards after the catch. But that ball is so loose in the left hand. Kilnogor does a great job of coming over the top. And boy, these receivers have struggled with drops. Now fumbles. Just an absolute momentum killer and a drive killer there from Dane Key. The receivers you talked about, a key part of the promise of this Kentucky team going back to the offseason. And the inability to take advantage of a big arm quarterback like Leary as Mario Anderson picks up a few before Deion Walker cuts him down. Walker carrying the load tonight. Coming off a five tackle game against Bam. Gamecocks have all three timeouts remaining. Rattler can't get out of the pocket, taken down by Dion Walker. Well, another one of those times that South Carolina is trying to change the launch point, but watch Dion Walker redirect here. With some speed, the big man seeing that, redirecting, putting the pressure on Spencer Rattler, getting him down. Down, down. That is a big 350 pound man that can move. Six tackle the night for Deion Walker. Cole, there may not be pressure coming in blitz packages for Kentucky, but if that D line can continue to work the South Carolina offensive line, it's going to be a long night for South Carolina. Especially if you're doing it with three or even four. Those are those are pressure packages or pass rushes that you've got to be able to pick up is that Kentucky offensive line and it's one that just has not been on the same page for multiple times this season whether that's redirecting the wrong way or quarterback not being on the same page with where things should be you rush three or four that, that's just getting beat one on one or maybe even two on one. Well Deion Walker is an incredible athlete. He was a great basketball player on a loaded team at Cash Tech in Detroit. They had two 300 pounders in the paint. That's Jackson Pruitt, who's playing at 
football at Temple now. We asked Dion, did you find any other centers about your size? He said, well, dude, we went up against a 6'10", 250. So no, not even close. That was a great high school basketball team, and Rattler is able to complete it to Anderson. A little shake there, and it goes it back to the end zone to pick that one up, and he's banged up. I mean, look, just look at Deion Walker's ankles, though. I mean, for a guy who's 340 pounds, like, you're, you're not supposed to have ankles that small. He's got to be athletic. He has 0% body fat from the waist down. Makes it zero look good, doesn't he? Anderson took a nasty hit. He kind of turned his back to the defense after he initially broke through. Looks good on the sideline now with the athletic training staff. That boy, and they need him. A great effort here on third and 12 to try to pick up an extra yard. Remaining. Kentucky has decided to, has elected to take the 10 second runoff. South Carolina will not use a timeout to avoid the 10 second runoff. Clock operator, please reset the game clock to 59 seconds. Well, that was just a pile drive. 49 yeah. seconds. You got a 10 second runoff for the injured player. South Carolina elects not to use the signal. timeout with 49 seconds left in the Thank half. Thank you. And they're looking at a fourth and one. Boy, that's good to see, right? With South Carolina already down, a couple of running backs to carry on Joyner, Juju McDowell out. They can't afford to lose 24. Anderson can't be on the field for this play after leaving due to injury. Carolina's going to go for it. They converted 35% of their fourth downs this season. D.J. Braswell is the running back. Trying to get him to jump. Clock rolling under 30 seconds. And South Carolina will take a timeout. And we'll take a shot here to close the half. season for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities all state will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund thank you all state 24 seconds left in the half coming up at the break you can watch the live performance from the mighty sound of the southeast on sec network plus start streaming now on the espn app i think they're going to play a few of derude's hits other than sandstorm well, uh, they might. The whole album, maybe? I'm not sure what. Not, uh, probably a long time. Okay. We heard the concert going on as we showed up today about 4.30. Don't need any vocals, do you? I don't think so. Try to get him to jump a couple of times. It didn't work. So Kai Kroger, senior out of Lake Forest, Illinois, on to punt it away. That's better. That's what we saw for him, from him in pregame. Even the Kentucky coaches were marveling at Kroger's big leg. And so Kentucky would get it with 13 seconds left. Wouldn't expect him to do anything here. But what's the message in either locker room, especially on the Kentucky side? Just, I, I don't want to say they seem uninspired, but they haven't been able to find any rhythm yet. No, they, they got to be better on first downs, right? Incompletions on first down, stopped runs on first down. They're just setting themselves up to be in bad situations behind the chains. I think Liam Cohen's got to figure out how to get the ball to Barry on Brown, how to get Ray Davis going. Both those guys have been a little quiet in the first half. Well, the production is dead even, 133 yards apiece. South Carolina, just two more plays than Kentucky. But in a game that means so much to South Carolina, Shane Beamer's program playing with a ton of energy tonight of what the head coach has provided on the Gamecock sideline. Or let's get you down to the field. Coach Beamer, you told us there was a big stretch during the season that your team just could not take the football away. What did you feel when you saw Jalen Kilgore rip that ball out? I uh, love the way they're playing on defense right now. A huge play by uh, Nicky Man Warry on the interception. Uh, we got to keep better leverage on the receiver, but heck of an effort by Kilgore. Our defense is playing their butts off right now. Right now we're getting our freaking 
you know what's kicked up front on the offensive line, and we haven't blocked zero since we took the field tonight. So we better figure out a way to block zero and find a way to sustain some drives. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. It's all right. It's after dark. You can say butts. South Carolina with a 10-7 lead at the break. Plenty of improvement on uh, both sides. Looking for that in the second half. Let's get to the studio. Here's Dari. Hit the second half. They turn out the lights and get this thing rev back up again. What a story in the first half. A couple of quarterbacks have each had a great quarter, but a low-scoring game. South Carolina with a 10-7 lead as we get set for the third quarter of action tonight. Tough to see them when they turn the lights off, isn't it? Lights are on here. Tom Hart, Jordan Rogers. We got cold down on the field. Uh, different quarters for each, but still South Carolina's takeaways really loom large. Absolutely. I thought Devin Leary really started getting into his stride there in the second quarter despite not running the football well the turnover was absolutely huge the strip fumble was absolutely huge so when we've been talking about South Carolina offense so much it's really the defense that showed up in this first half they had a great first quarter but then unable to get any footing afterwards and dominated the ball when Kentucky couldn't get their hands on it in the first quarter so in a series where the margins are so slim and the fan base reaction really boils down to one game in terms of momentum for the season. This is still huge for both sides. Kentucky trying to improve its bull lot. South Carolina needs a win tonight and next Saturday night against Clemson to make it to a bowl. Alex Rayner will kick it away. Dead even 133 133 yards each. You know what Shane Beamer puts on every Monday night he turns it to SEC Network and he watches read and react. Here's what sneak preview he can watch Monday. Well he likes the block party and we're going to get to uh, something he probably won't like because there's not a lot of party with these lack of blocks. Dion Walker defensive tackle we've talked a lot about his impact on the game watch him read and then react back flat across the line of scrimmage be able to make that play on Mario Anderson and then here just fighting through the double team pad level has been something that has been very inconsistent for Dion Walker throughout the course of his career outside zone play comes right at him he's able to battle through that double team and get the tackle for loss great job. He's had a monster game for this Kentucky squad with those tackles behind the line of scrimmage and a quick release to Marion Brown and a Brown picks up the first time. So how does South Carolina counter that pressure? Spencer Rattler getting rid of it quickly. Yeah, they, they've had pressure anytime they try to drop back or even change the launch point push the ball downfield. It's been Deion Walker and a bevy of others. So get the ball out of your hands quick. Marion Brown is that kind of change up guy. Get the ball to him in the flats. Even find ways to get Xavier Leggett involved on these quick throws as well play action Rattler steps up throws on the run takes it deep it is incomplete Amari and Brown step for step was Maxwell Hairston what a great thought by Spencer Rattler here nothing open downfield steps up sees him late this is an absolute bomb with Trevin Wallace in his face Really good job there by Maxwell Harrison adjusting and making sure Brown can't get his hands on it. Rattler, that one's blown up immediately. And on the pass to Josh Simon. Zion Childress transferred from Texas State. Quarterback at New Caney High School outside of Houston. In a couple of years as a wide receiver, he was first team All State, also lettered in both basketball and track and field. He's an all around great athlete. Four man rush on third and ten. Rattler goes left just a hair, and that one falls incomplete. He was chased by Deion Walker and J.J. Weaver. Just no time to throw the ball here. Just a little bit of a stunt. J.J. Weaver is going to start outside, work inside as Deion Walker blasts through a double team and both of them right in the face of Rattler as he's trying to find Xavier Leggett down the field past the sticks. Kroger is averaging 41 yards a punt. 
Tavion Robinson to receive for the Cats. That's a beauty. Robinson lets it go over his head. And South Carolina's long snapper Hunter Rogers downs it after a 55 yard punt. Boy, what a great start for Devin Leary. Showing the arm strength there, ripping a dig route, and then layering the football here in between up and over zone coverage. Finish it off with a touchdown to Barry on Brown. That was the good, and then the bad here. Just forcing the throw in tight coverage, trying to get it past D Man Worry. 6 3 DB. Got to know when to take the chance, take the high risk throw, and when to just check it down. Both Brown and Key have gone over 1,000 yards receiving on the night. Larry just 7 of 15. Well, not on the night. That would be some sort of record, but for their careers. And a straight ahead run, a pickup of five. Thirty third and thirty fourth wide receivers in Kentucky history with thousand receiving yards. And you know, one of the things talking to Liam Cohen down on the field about his running back Ray Davis and the struggles they've had rushing the football is just not really breaking the tackles that yeah. you saw him do earlier in the season. I mean, the first guy could never bring down Ray Davis, and as of late, as the season has progressed get a little more banged up and just not breaking tackles and getting the yards after contact like he was earlier in the season. Larry trying to throw for it this time. Brown picks up the first down. Collier yanks him down after pickup of seven. Brown came up a little gimpy there. He's got a little tape on his knee already. He's going to have to exit the game. Sophomore out of Pearl Cohen in Nashville. Well, I do love the emphasis Liam Cohen has put on trying to get him targets, get him involved early in this game. Let's hope he's okay and can come back in. Here's Ray Davis. Got hit immediately and taken down. Debo Williams. Second and 11 remaining. Said this earlier in the first half, Kentucky had to shuffle the offensive line. Kenneth Horsey's been battling a bad knee. He's out tonight. Ray moves the left guard, and Jagger Burton getting the start at right guard. Here comes the linebacker blitz. Leary tipped and incomplete. Stone Blanton came in on the blitz and got a fingertip on it. Boy, tip balls have really been an issue dating back to last week against Alabama. A few of them. That time it was the pressure. Last week it was more Leary staring guys down. That time just too much in the face of Leary pressure and then tip ball after the fact. And here, third and long, the crowd's getting into it. Man rush. Leary leads the pocket. We got a flag down, and he fires this one over to the Kentucky sideline. Good catch by Dude and Khakis. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Number 90 on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Down. That's TJ Sanders. Right here on the left side of your screen, getting his hands up in the face of Marquez Cox right there. Yeah. Initial protection was pretty good, just coverage on the back end. Every receiver was blanketed. And boy, without that penalty, that would have been a big stop by the South Carolina defense. Kentucky's first first down of the game came via penalty. And now here one in the second half. And nothing doing with that run game. Pick up of only three for Ray Davis. Another stop by Debo Williams. 
So what, what do you see when you watch Ray Davis over the last few games? Well, just a little bit of hesitancy. If you saw right there, he kind of side skipped a little bit before he got going downhill. Now, it's not all on Ray Davis, right? When there's not an initial hole there, it's tough to get ahead of steam and get going downfield, as you see Mark Stoops probably saying something pretty similar there. Not much to work with, but only 167 yards on 20 carries over the previous three games after a sensational start to the year. Trying to find a hole with Ramon Jefferson. And he's really shown something. He picks up three there. Missed all the last year with a knee injury. Coming in fifth among Division I rushers in terms of the active career rush list. A little more of that burst, right? There's yeah. a suddenness to Jefferson's game, which is why I think Liam Cohen has wanted to see a little bit more of him. Now on third down. No Jordan Dingle. No Josh Caddis. Who's the go-to guy here? No Barry on Brown. Who's the go-to guy here for Devin Leary? Oh, Barry on is out yep. there, actually. Came back in the game. That's big. Now third and four looking that way. And out of the backfield is Isaiah Cummings. That's a gain of 14 and a Kentucky first down. Well, I love this, right? Mentioned no Jordan Dingle. He's their F, that athletic or H tight end. Isaiah Cummings filling in for Jordan Dingle, but coming across the line of scrimmage there. Finding a way to get the athletic tight end involved there in the flats. Easy throw for the quarterback. So one of the goals for Liam Cohen, by the way, coming into this game was if South Carolina is going to show a specific defense, they want to try to keep them in that. And I think Mark Stoops is just waving Isaiah Cummings to stay on the field. They wanted to keep the same personnel and maybe go tempo. But he took himself off the field for this play. And Leary setting up. Fires a bullet and weaves it through traffic. Wow, what a thread of the needle to Dane Key for the first down. Wow. This is a strike. Wanted a double move to the field to Barry on Brown. It wasn't there. You're going to see Leary work his eyes to the left here. Right there. Barry on Brown not there. Comes right to Dane Key. And that is a tight window. He fits it right in. That's that arm strength. Hey, sometimes it pays off to throw it as hard as you possibly can. That no time doubt. Here's Davis. Good burst there, and Davis with a spin. A first down and plenty more. Six more, in fact. Touchdown on a 31-yard run. And that is the Ray Davis that Liam Cohen has been waiting to see again. Bursting through the first level, getting on a safety, and watch the spin move. Gets through the first and second level, and whoop, see ya. That is the guy that Ray Davis was for the whole first half of the season and his entire career. That is his 17th touchdown of the season, 12th rushing. Among the best of the country, Rayner adds the extra point. Put him in the spin cycle. And since the second quarter, this Kentucky offense firing on all cylinders, and Ray Davis saying, hey, the rude can spin it, <laughs> but so can I. Well, nine play, 92 yard drive for Kentucky. Took 520 off the clock. Longest touchdown drive of the season. And yeah, good to see number one cash it in. And a touchdown in the first eight games of the season. That's a Best run for Kentucky players since Randall Cobb in 2009. Cobb stretch came in the middle of the season. Kentucky with its first lead of the game. And a touch back here. Let's touch it back to the studio. Dari, how are those butts and seats? Well, you, you know, the, the butts are good. We're having a little meeting about our show that's coming up a little later. We're also going to update you what's going on. Florida and Missouri, a fun third quarter so far. Trevor Etienne on a 37-yard pass from Grant Mertz. I split the Gators ahead, but just moments ago, Brady Cook makes his way to the end zone. Mizzou back on top. Back and forth there in Como, guys. Brady Cook doing his best Grant Smith impersonation. 
exactly known for his running, but Spencer Rattler ran it well in the first quarter tonight. They went with Lenore Sellers again and hands up to Marion Brown for a gain of one. Yeah, Dow Loggins, offensive coordinator for South Carolina, just trying to find something that sticks right now. Last four possessions for South Carolina, just one first down, first down, 13 plays, 21 yards. Been tough sledding here since the first quarter. They're going to stick with Sellers with Rattler behind him in the pistol. Second and nine. DJ Braswell is a running back. Now they move Rattler out. Sellers hands it off. And Deion Walker makes another play. That's a gain of three. Oh, Deion Walker has been everywhere. It's a problem. Every time you look up, he's making a play. And I even mentioned, I think most of the season, a lot of the stats don't signify his impact. But tonight, no. stacking the stat column and making a huge impact there. Bringing down the true freshman, Braswell. And he's working on a true freshman right guard. Kevon Baugh out of Pace Academy in Atlanta. Rattler back at quarterback, and he lets this one go. It is incomplete. Trying to find Leggett. Late coverage from Maxwell Hairston and Ty Bryant. Yeah, just a vertical route. Going to be double covered by Hairston underneath. And safety over the top. This ball just a little underthrown as you see Ty Bryant to safety trying to catch up to Xavier Leggett. Rattler couldn't quite step into that one all the way, and that probably about five yards shorter than he wanted it to be. Does anybody talk trash as a position group better than DBs? No. They'll even do it when they didn't even really make the play. The quarterback <laughs> maybe just missed. Fair catch taken. What a great tradition here, really. South Carolina's professional team for many years until the Panthers came around. And they still enjoy incredible, incredible support at this huge stadium. And a team with a losing record as of today needing to win out. And boy, it's going to be packed next week as well. We're talking about Alex Huntley, big number 95. Him growing up a South Carolina fan. He said, you know, Aaron, there's Huntley in on the tackle. Perfect timing. He said, South Carolina, when I was younger, was kind of dominating that Clemson series. He said, then Clemson got a win, and I noticed all these people in town started wearing orange more than they ever had before. Band what a difference. Fans. Yeah. <laughs> How about home versus road for South Carolina? Something about playing here, huh? Must be DeRue. Got to be. I'll tell you that last Kentucky touchdown drive took a little bit of life out of this stadium. On second and eight, Leary. They got a hold, and there's the flag. And it was Ray Davis on the catch. Well, they had Tonka Hemingway in a headlock. Tremont Green would have been proud of that one. Holding number 84 on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Ash Callis was banged down. up in the first half. Back on the field now for the Cats. When Tonka Hemingway gives you that boom bada, that move right here, just splitting you, yeah, not much you can do. That is, he's not even trying to hide it there. <laughs> he's just, I'm just going to grab his, I'm going to ear hole him. Just try to keep him off my quarterback. Second and 18. This Kentucky offense is one of the slowest pace of play in college football. He wouldn't mind making this a quick second half and try to run some clock, but got to pick up a first down to really do so. Leary over the middle. That's complete to Dan Key. And a manageable third and eight. Well, I really think we're seeing the best version of Devin Leary right now. I mean, the interception really is only mistake, but he's been pretty sharp. Most of this game, and they're in a good rhythm right now. Need another one here on third and eight. Kentucky started the game 0 for 3 on third down. Since then, 5 for 5. Different story. Script flip for South Carolina. Play clock is at 4. Get it off at 1. Or did they? We got flags.
Full start. 77 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. It's Jeremy Flax. And Mark Soup says, same person. Well, they're bringing different personnel in. Yeah, and center Eli Cox was trying to change protection here at the last minute. Watch him pointing. Devin Leary sent in motion. He's going to point, change protection right here. Then he's going to clap. Doesn't hear the clap. The rest of the offensive line does. That's what happens on third down. South Carolina will stack that line of scrimmage, trying to get the perfect protection and hurt him on that play. Uh, third and 13, Leary evades pressure and a long run if he tries to get it. They take him down in the open field. It's Nick Emanwari. Well, that'll end the Cats' third down run. So from a center standpoint, it feels like breaking the huddle late, getting to the line late, really puts pressure on Eli Cox in addition to what South Carolina is. Absolutely. Right, you mentioned how slow their pace is, and, and a lot of that is because they hold the huddle so long. So you actually has less time up there to get yourself in the right protection. And Eli Cox tried to do his best, but didn't get it off. Chance for a return for Kilgore. And South Carolina's going to have fantastic field position. 44-yard punt, 15 on the return. Four minutes left in the third quarter in an emotional night here in the Mid-State. All right, Dari, thanks. Here's Xavier Leggett. I want to just ask a question about Georgia, and I know we're not concerned about them at all, but there have been multiple occasions where they have started out in a hole, like they did today against Tennessee, 75-yard run to start the game against Elite competition, is that an issue? No, I don't think so because the defense, I think, is only getting better and the offense has been what has carried them, right? That offense is clicking on all cylinders. They're healthy with Brock Bowers back. So even if they get in the hole, they're absolutely capable on offense of digging out of it. Low throw to Marion Brown, picked it off the turf and is able to take it for a first down. Great hands by Brown. Fifth year player out of Tampa, Florida by way of Georgia Tech. Yellow Jackets, former team, have a three touchdown lead on Syracuse tonight, second half. A win from bowl eligibility. Here's Anderson. And Anderson straight ahead, and he picks up the first down. Great push up front there by that South Carolina offensive line. Ja'Kai Moore, left guard. Big push, open up that hole for Mario Anderson to get north and south. And now you're starting to see a little life, a little energy after a first down. Here's Anderson again, hesitated, and ran right into the waiting arms. Uh, big number zero, Deion Walker. I mean, that dude, he told us that he took up bowling during COVID because it was the only place to socialize. And not only did he get good enough at one point to Bull nine consecutive strikes, but he owns three balls, a 12-pounder, a 14-pounder, and a 16-pounder. And my guess is he can make that 12-pounder move like a softball. Rattler, it's taken down by guess who? Dion Walker. Who are you fooling? He makes that 16-pounder look like true. a softball. I mean, look at the man. And once again, I'm a broken record, but you got to be able to block zero here. It's the secondary move. Again, it's the reading and reacting like Cole pointed out right after half. And that's a big body. That's a guy that conditioning has been an issue. His weight's been an issue. Talent has never been an issue. He's playing a lot of snaps tonight and making a big impact. Dude's going to be playing football for a long yes. time. Now third and eight. The game up front. Rattler trying to escape. And he gets taken down at the logo. Sacked by Octavius Oxendine. Oh, it's just a couple TE stunts. Coverage on the back end by Kentucky was there. 
Rattler tried to buy some time and just wasn't able to, as you see, the ends coming around, pressuring up the middle, caused Rattler to scramble. And Oxidine right there to clean it up. In on his second sack of the season. Gamecox with another fail on third down. Oh, for the last seven on third down, a fourth three and outs now. Ball start on the offense. All 11 players were not set prior to the snap. Fourth down. Tack on a few more, fourth and forever now with Kai Kroger out in the field. Kroger is a great weapon and a fair catch taken inside the 10. 20 seconds left in the quarter. Let's get it to Laura Rutledge and our friends at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Wherever fun happens, Academy Sports and Outdoors is there. We had some special guests this morning at our production meeting. Special thanks to Cole's aunt and uncle and Lori from Ridgeway, South Carolina, letting us know exactly what we do right and wrong in our broadcast. You behaved yourself? I didn't say that. Don't forget crazy Uncle John. Yeah, Uncle John. Ridgeway population 80. Told Uncle John he should run for mayor. There's Ramon Jefferson with the carry. That was the over under in F bombs. I thought he might drop in our meeting. <laughs> it was definitely an entertaining meeting. Back home watching the game tonight. And as is normal in this game, this series, we go to the fourth quarter with nothing decided. Stoops, V. Beamer, Kentucky versus Carolina. To the fourth we go. DeRoad is in the cockpit and he is leading the party here wins Bryce Stadium tonight. We got 15 minutes to decide this thing. Kentucky looking at a second of four. Pressure up the middle, nearly jump, and a first down run by Ramon Jefferson. Well, he is making up for lost time in a hurry after a knee injury cost him last season. Boy, Jeremy Flax right tackle pulling around from this right side. Watch the block up inside on Debo Williams there, clearing the way for Jefferson. It's just, it's amazing watching this offense when the run game is hitting, right? It's just so much different. Devin Leary playing different. The pass game opening up. And it's complimentary football, not just on the offensive side, but the way Mark Stoops wants yes. to play defensively. Here's Ray Davis back in the game. Got to fight through that first tackle, picks up two. By the way, we want to send our thoughts and prayers out to our buddy Freddie Maggard, former Kentucky football player, dealing with some health issues, and made that public this week. Such a key part of their coverage with Kentucky Sports Radio and beloved by the Kentucky fan base. Well, he's watching the game and covering it tonight. He's one of the best when it comes to the knowledge and history of Kentucky football, and obviously we're all thinking about you praying for you, Freddie. On second down to go play action. Larry going deep. And he overthrows again. What what goes into a quarterback's play that leads to overthrows? Well, that ball just came out a little too flat. He's got such a big arm. He can afford to put a lot more air on that ball and allow his receiver to run underneath it, adjust to it. Worst case scenario, it's a 50-50 jump ball. Yeah. You'd rather have that than an overthrow, and I think he's just rushing some of those throws, and they're coming out a little too flat. See a 
Oh, South Carolina job dials up some pressure. They're showing man coverage across the board. Timeout taken Time out. by Kentucky. Kentucky, they're first. And we will join them. Keep third down coming up for the Cats. Staying at Halls later, third and eight. It's called compromise. <laughs> we all make sacrifices in life. Now this is a big one for Kentucky. And a South Carolina team that wants to win tonight and then again next week to make it to a bowl. And before the timeout, South Carolina showed a five man pressure with man coverage. See if they go back to that or they change it up. A couple of drops from this wide receiver court tonight, especially early on. The stagnant first quarter for this team. Safety blitz coming. And that one just wide, one on the same page as Tavian Robinson. Yeah, South Carolina brings a late pressure. It's man coverage and just a miscommunication between Leary and Tavian Robinson there. I think Leary expected him to break out or turn around his right shoulder. He turned inside. Is that a wide receiver's choice sometimes or somebody was wrong? Not usually. Someone's wrong there. That type of route, option routes, yes, sometimes, but that was a deeper hook route. Here's Wilson Barrett to punt it away. Freshman Jalen Kilgore back to receive it. And a fair catch taken at the 26. And he may have gotten kick catch interference afterwards, but there is no flag on the play. We move on. Let's take a look at tonight's high speed play brought to you by T Mobile 5G Home Internet. Well, at some point, someone's got to figure out how to block Deion Walker. No one's figured it out tonight. He's been all over the place in the run, but most impressive getting after Spencer Rattler. He's been all over the place, came into the game with 26 quarterback pressures, best on the team for Kentucky, and he's added to that a few times tonight. Tonight, two tackles for loss and a sack. And he's, he's playing having, loose. He's having fun, huh? Mm -hmm. I'd have fun if people couldn't block me either. That'd be that'd be pretty fun to play like that. Play action. Rattler flagged down. Likely be holding. And Rattler took a big hit on the sideline there too. See him grimacing a little bit. Avon Rayner is the one to deliver the hit. Holding number 53 on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Again, when you move the pocket like this, really easy for O linemen to get their hands on the outside as defenders try to run away. That's what you saw there. And there's the big hit on Rattler. He's taken a few of those. Yeah, he has. Trayvon Ribka. Number 90 was the one that drew the flag on the holding. Backwards pass to Marion Brown. He gets taken down right at the sideline by Keaton Wade. Gain of one. Is the South Carolina passing game so predicated on play action that they have to follow through with every fake, or can they simplify and get rid of it a little bit quicker? Maybe to save Rattler the just the time that it takes in carrying out those fakes. Yeah, no, they can. They're capable of spreading it out, playing a little more small ball, quick game. But you're right. The problem is they have 37 rushing yards tonight. They, they have they are completely one dimensional right now, and Kentucky knows exactly what they're trying to do. Here's Trey Knox on the catch. Gain of four. A lot of those quick passes, Tom, extension to the run game, like Dal Loggins told us, and he said in those meetings, our passing game is getting the ball to the open guy with timing. So. When that, when that pass game becomes an extension of the run game, got to happen quickly, and this Kentucky defense has made a nice adjustment under Brad White. And Dow Loggins would love to get it to Xavier Leggett more, but he only has three catches for 32 yards tonight. Even averaging 109 per game. Rattler straight drop. Over the middle. Oh, caught. Look how it is. It's Xavier Leggett. And he'll take it near midfield. No play action, straight drop, find your best receiver. A 
Marion Brown does a great job of taking the coverage high over the top. And then Leggett right behind him there on the dig route. Call that a dagger concept. One vertical takes the safeties. You see 10 there working up the field. And Leggett right behind him on the dig route. Finding the vacancy in that zone. So South Carolina with new life after that first down. Here's Anderson through the right side. Eight yards on first down. Anderson averaging just a hair over two yards a carry tonight. Came in averaging six yards a rush. That's that's called the Deion Walker effect. <laughs> yeah. He's been the bowling ball. Carolina offensive line have been the pins. Anderson got to the yellow line, which is obviously unofficial, but enough for a first down. Another fresh set of downs for the Gamecocks. Anderson's got to come out. They don't have any depth behind him. They'll bring in DJ Braswell, freshman running back, and Walker getting a breather for the Cats. Uh, play action Rattler finds Trey Knox for the first down and South Carolina rolling along again to 21. That's a great route by Trey Knox. Cole mentioned was a receiver at Arkansas changed to tight end. Little double move corner route. You see Rattler with his eyes downfield holding the safety and then getting back outside to Trey Knox on the double move. Seventh play of this drive started 56 yards ago. They're going to run the reverse. This is Amari and Brown, and he's going to lose yardage. Alex Afari Jr. stuck with it. Oh, this great play by Afari Jr. there of staying with your contained assignment. Ball goes away from you, but stays outside, forces him back inside to the rest of the defenders there. And Slowed down a little bit of a trick play there from South Carolina. Carolina led this game 10 0 before Kentucky found the end zone in the second quarter, added another in the third. Here's Anderson. Huge block on the edge, and that'll be a crack black and draw the flag. Omega Blake. What do you think of the flag? Well, he doesn't hit the back of him. Illegal blindside block, number 89. But it was a blindside. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, second down. So initially thought it might be a block in the back. Actually gets the front side of him here. Omega Blake, you're going to see him peel back. But that, this is the, these are the type of plays they're trying to get out of the game. The right. blind sides. This is how some injuries occur if you hit a guy up high, not paying attention right there. It wasn't vicious, but by the rule of the law, that's something they're trying to get out of the game. They want you to get in front of them and shield them off, not make contact. Simple player safety rule, and what a swing that is. It leaves Carolina with a second and 26 now. Fake to Braswell, come back to Leggett. Makes a couple guys miss. Got a convoy. And he picks up big yardage for South Carolina. They'll mark him out at about the 17. Making it 17 yard gain for number 17. Boy, a little jailbreak screen. Tree Babalade, Jakai Moore. Big boys, left tackle, left guard out there out in front. Trying to pick up somebody. Just get in the way, big boy. And a big pickup to make it a at least a more manageable third down here. After the big penalty pushed him back. Lake Lock late. Rattler wanted to change it. Here comes pressure. And he fires in zone for the score. And South Carolina jumps back in front.
Second touchdown of the night for Xavier Leggett. And three huge plays on this drive for the most improved wide receiver in college football. This play was made by the true freshman, DJ Braswell. Huge pickup on the blitz. And what an answer by South Carolina and Spencer Rattler. They overcame the second and 26. They converted a third and 15. Leggett will get the headlines with Braswell doing the dirty work. Yeah, and forced into a role he may not be ready yet. May not be ready for yet, but Derek Jackson blitzing here, 23 with a huge pickup. And Rattler with traffic all around him. Finds his main man for the answer and the go-ahead. Tannehill, the record for passing touchdowns. Connor Shaw, three straight 11 win seasons under the head ball coach. And tonight, Spencer Rattler trying to join that elite company. Six of six on that last drive for 89 yards. Those other guys are beloved for what they accomplished here. And in the end, you talk to other coaches in the league, this staff, they just rave about Rattler. And there's talk, he may be the best quarterback ever played here. Most talented for sure. I mean, he is so gifted. If they can close this one out, maybe get a big one next week, get him back to a bowl, that kind of builds that legacy for him. And let's think about when things really turned around for him. Before the Tennessee game last yeah. year, they simplified the offense. They cut the playbook down from like 90 plays to about 60. Let's do what he's comfortable doing. His maturity, his willingness to be a leader and what he's gone through this is a football player it's going to be really appealing to the NFL team his growth has been unbelievable right came into college football as one of the highly touted highly scrutinized players we've ever seen that only accelerated at Oklahoma and now here at South Carolina number one quarterback in his class here is Ray Davis for maybe a yard goal I mean, I tell you, I think the, the best football player to play that position at this university would be still be Connor Shaw, maybe best career. Yeah. Tanny Hill put up great numbers. But this young man, I just don't think in the grand scope of this season, gets enough credit based on everything that's happened around him. You guys have talked about the injuries on the offensive line. You're playing two true freshmen on that offensive line. You have a former quarterback play in the slot. You had a former quarterback playing running back. Your number one wide receiver hasn't played since week three. I know now Xavier again is that guy now, but that's a lot for a quarterback to go through in one season. Maybe he'll end up on the radio like Tommy and Todd. Second and nine. Pressure coming. Larry got rid of it. An immediate stop to bring up a huge third down with South Carolina leading by three. Oh, and Eman Worry with a great open field tackle. He had the big interception earlier in the end zone in the first half. And now the play of the game so far, this third down right here as Kentucky tries to quiet this crowd and rebuttal the touchdown from South Carolina. But in time to find Tavion Robinson, and that's a first down for Kentucky. Boy, the accuracy here once again from Leary works inside out. See him move his eyes a little bit, trying to move a secondary defender. And then puts that one right on the face mask. Only place that could have been to Tavion Robinson. Larry's picked up the pace in the second half. They're going to run a reverse. This is Tavian Robinson again. Good moves before he gets shoved by Eman Worry and company. Second and about five coming up. Given what we've seen from Kentucky tonight, what is their offense best at right now? Well, those intermediate throws is where Devin Leary has excelled tonight. It's been the deep shots that have been just off. But yeah. you feel like Liam Cohen's going to dip into that well one more you time. You keep calling it, you right? You have to. 
His quarterback is capable. And they've gotten behind South Carolina coverage a couple times tonight, getting a lot of man coverage on this drive. They're going to have an opportunity to take a shot if they want it. Intermediate again, right to midfield. Dane Key with the grab. Local product, grew up a Kentucky fan right there in Lexington out of Frederick Douglass High School. Four and a half minutes and rolling. Kentucky's got a strong kicking game behind the leg of Alex Rayner. If they have to settle for three. Leary feels the pressure. Backpedaling fires incomplete. Davis had a step on Debo Williams. And a little pressure from the outside coming from the left to Devin Leary here. Cox tries to get back out and get to it as late as he can but pushed Leary out of the pocket. Did the best he could just get rid of the ball. This is where you don't want to abandon the run, right? I mean, four minutes left. You got plenty of time. Just need to at least get yourself in field goal range. Looking for Brown. And nearly picked. Oh, my. Kilgore had to go right through his hands. He saw the same thing everybody else did, the developing play to try to find Barry on Brown. Boy, and almost exactly the interception that Leary threw last week against Alabama. Almost the same route as well. Just a little bit late, and that ball's going to be out. We can see Barry on Brown waiting for it. That ball's going to be outside and out earlier, and Kilgore should have had that one, and he'd still be running. Third down. Backer blitz picked up Larry going deep hand fighting downfield no flag and incomplete for Brown he was trying to stave off the defender closest to him Kilgore boy a lot of contact and hand fighting going on on the outside trying to take a shot to bury on Brown a lot of contact there Really both ways. So they're, they're going for it on fourth play. down. Fourth and ten. Four minutes to play. And one of eight on fourth down this season. Play clock at two. One. Zero. And there's the flag. They'll kill this play before it got off. All right, so if you're Liam Cohen. Maybe Kentucky got a timeout here. If you're Mark Stoops and Liam Cohen and you go for it, Delay game. on the fourth and ten, you stick with it on fourth and fifteen. No, they're bringing the punt. No, team. you don't. Yeah, four minutes left. You have two timeouts, so plenty of time to try to get the ball back. But they were calling a play there. They were trying to get Isaiah Cummings on a crossing route with three receivers on the other side of the field blocking for him. Just didn't get off in time there. Boy, that was a roll of the dice, huh? Fourth and ten? I thought surely they were just going to take the delay of game on purpose. Not on accident there. Yeah, not on accident. And that continues to be an issue in terms of what they asked this offense to do. Late out of the huddle, late to the line. Barry gets rid of it quickly. And that'll trickle inside the five and back them all the way up to the two. I'll make it the one. 53 yard punt. Maybe the biggest of the season for Wilson Berry. Three point game late call. Tom, I just wanted to give you a quick update. My man Darude right here came over and he said, This is expletive incredible. <laughs> he ain't wrong. I don't know what. Say it. Don't say it. Make travel easier. Jordan was hanging with Dolly on Rocky Top this morning and here in Columbia this evening. Nice easy trip. 
Dolly to Darude. I, I don't know if there's ever been that's a called that's called a range Tom. They got to sneak it out of the end zone and Rattler try to create some space walk me through a quarterback's head with the ball backed up at your own one yard line. Well it's a nightmare you're taking a snap with your heels in your end zone so great job at least giving you a couple yards there. But the problem here for South Carolina you're in your four minute offense right three and a half minutes left you want to try to milk the clock. They haven't been able to run the football the last right. They only have two scholarship running backs on roster. Mario Williams a little banged up tonight as well. So do they lean on Spencer Rattler and Xavier Leggett like they did last drive or do they try to milk the clock and run the football. And you got to try to find a way around the mountain of a man Dion Walker. Big number zero is that a big game. Mario Anderson is the running back. Anderson got a little bit of space. Three minutes of play and rolling. Well, that's a huge gain there even a few yards. Get you in a situation where you can drop back pass and not be standing in your end zone if you want to here on third and four. Boy, Jordan, that was snug too. Joshua Simon, the splitter yeah. on that split zone. I mean, Mario Anderson came in right behind him. Not much room. Third and four. Knox is the tight end on the left side. They're going to roll the pocket for Rattler. And the end zone gets rid of it incomplete. Trying to get it to Nick Harbor. And now how about the decision to go for it on fourth down and it cost themselves a chance with the false start. And now they'll get it back after this stop. Yeah it paid off. But he, here's the tough part when you got Deion Walker on the other side and you haven't been able to protect and drop back. You go to sprint out but when you do that you limit the quarterback's options. You only have two options and if they're covered you got no choice there. So tough situation for Dow Loggins the offensive coordinator backed up. Great job by Kentucky of flipping field position and giving themselves the ball back here. Ty Kroger's first punt of the night was not a great one. He's recovered nicely since then. And this one's going to give Kentucky good field position right at midfield. 2-10 to play in regulation. South Carolina leading Kentucky by three. Well, Shane Beamer has some sort of magical, I don't know, recipe up his sleeve when it comes to November. Seven and three overall. What a finish to the season for the South Carolina program last year. Wins over a ranked Tennessee team and against Clemson on the road. They need two wins to make it to bowl this season, starting with this, trying to hold on for the last 210. And the Devils guys come to town next week. Leary has it knocked out of his hand to flag down. It's recovered by Tonka Hemingway. And the question will be incomplete pass or fumble. Flag is in the backfield, which could be anything in this scenario. Holding on the offense, number 69. This building is shaking right now. Jordan Strawn forced it out. It's a third turnover of the night for Kentucky. You feel your feet moving? Wow. Boy, Devin Leary was just holding on to this ball a little bit too long, trying to hit a double move to Dan Key. Watch this wind up. Look at how long this release is. And Strawn just able to get his hand in there. That ball, I mean, that is one of those big releases. Byron Leftwood style, it looked like on that one. That ball is out there. And Strawn did a great job coming around the edge on oh. Cox. By the way, I thought it hit the ground. That's just a straight pick by yeah. Hemingway, even if it was a pass, which wouldn't have been. But another takeaway for South Carolina. Under two minutes to play now. Kentucky's got two timeouts left. Desperate for a stop. Anderson swallowed up at the logo. Timeout, Kentucky. Timeout, Kentucky. Their second. This will be a 30 second timeout. Wow, what a wild finish to this one. And 
a huge momentum opportunity for the South Carolina team trying to make it to the postseason. You know, we started this game talking about Shane Beamer and the momentum for this program, and it kind of dissipated throughout the course of the season because of all these injuries. They can get it back in a hurry, not just with this, with next week's game too. No doubt an up and down game in the first half. South Carolina started out fast. Second quarter disappeared, got the momentum back here, and starting to feel like this team is playing with a little more energy, a little more confidence. And if they do that, finish out tonight and a big one next week against Clemson, who knows? Well, it really depends on what your schedule looks like, doesn't it? In the last four games, able to find some rhythm. That knock on against Jacksonville State was a hard fought victory. And then had their way with Vanderbilt last week. And we got a flag and a false start on the South Carolina side. All right, you look ahead if Kentucky can get a stop here. False start on the offense. Oh, they'll stop time. Not all 11 players oh, they have time. Prior to the well, they got a quarterback with a big arm yeah. and a very Please talented wide receiver. Game clock to one minute and it 55 feels seconds. like. Not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but Kentucky as an offense is better when they run with tempo. Yes, absolutely. Simplify things so the two minute is somewhere where Devin Leary can make some big time throws. But again, they got plenty of time with a couple stops to get the ball back. And again, just a field goal they need. That's right. Don't need a deep Hail Mary or anything if they do get the ball back and a stop here on second and third. There's Anderson. Back down behind the line of scrimmage by Trevin Wallace. Timeout. Kentucky, their third and final timeout. And a third and 16. This will be a 30 second timeout. So, next play will be about five seconds, right? You hope every average plays around six seconds. That gets you down to 145, and clock would tick down all the way down to just over a minute when Kentucky would, or excuse me, South Carolina would have to punt the ball. So, Kentucky's got an opportunity to get the ball back with plenty of time here to work. No timeouts, but. Two minute drill is in play to see if Kentucky can stop them here on third, get it back, and get themselves in a field goal situation to try to tie the game. Now, you, you would assume that those deep ball opportunities that Kentucky had throughout this game won't be there in a prevent right. defense for South Carolina. But Leary's ability to put a little something on the ball and pick up a couple first downs would have them right where they need That's to be. That's probably what he's done best tonight, right? The intermediate yeah. throws. Minus the one interception, he's been pretty on. So, all starts right here in third long. This Kentucky defense needs to get a stop. And the clock will tick all the way down to just above one minute before a punt if they do. Here's Leggett. It's taken down inbounds. So as you said, 46 is on the clock when the play ended. We'll have about a minute when they get it back after the punt. Right now, Liam Cohen relaying down the first couple plays of this two minute drive, right? That two minute package is usually about 10 to 15 plays at most, depending on what personnel group you're in. So he's going over the first couple plays with Devin Leary, relaying that to the sidelines so the coaches can talk him through the situation as they get the ball back here. Tavion Robinson is back there. Kroger got rid of it quickly, ended up getting some decent hang time. And goes out of bounds right at the 20. 36 yard punt, 57 seconds left in regulation. Kentucky needing a field goal to extend this game or a touchdown for the lead. Devin Leary on the night, 14 to 29 for 151, one touchdown and two picks. And the pressure is what ended the series early last time for the Cats. He's been his go-to guy. The tall receiver, 6'3", matchup problem at the bottom of your screen here. Split out as the X. This is a young South Carolina secondary playing without O'Donnell Fortune, who's not available tonight. They drop eight. Leary steps up and fires to his tight end, Isaiah Cummings, who gets out of bounds. That's a great job of not taking a risk downfield, not throwing the corner out to key, but checking it down to Cummings, just getting some positive yards on first down. 50 seconds left, the clock will stop there. And again, after a first down, under two minutes, the clock will pause as they set the ball. Up eight again. 
Leary could run for it, goes across his body, and they're able to get the first down on a big hit from Eamon Worry on Ray Davis. 41 seconds left. Kentucky out of timeouts. Clock rolling now with the ball set. And South Carolina kind of content to sit back in this drop eight right now. A lot of zone eyes on Leary. Leary down the sideline, nearly picked again. Marcellus Dial with the coverage and DQ Smith helping out over the top. Well, you want to talk about zone eyes. You see Barry on Brown not even expecting the ball. Marcel Dial all over it, eyes on the ball the entire way, and then Brown tries to play defense at the last second there. Not sure what Barion was doing. Two-minute drill. Ball can go anywhere. You got to be ready. Larry can certainly fit it through a tight window. Might be his only choice here with 28 seconds left. A little confusion here getting lined up. They rush three again. Leary with a strike to the edge and out of bounds goes Tavion Robinson. Boy, it just feels like with how much over the top zone drop eight coverage South Carolina is playing right now. Isaiah Cummings, number eight, who's filling in for the injured Jordan Dingle, is going to have to make a play over the middle of the field. On a linebacker that's maybe one of your best matchups. Leary goes to the seam and incomplete. Tavian Robinson was all alone. Boy, mate, yeah, a little hand on that one there. Not sure who that was jumping up. There's one fingertip. Fourth down, here's the game for Kentucky. Leary over the middle, batted again. That time it's Tonka Hemingway, and South Carolina will take over, and they're going to win this game and have one chance to play for bowl eligibility. And what a disappointing season for Kentucky with a rivalry game still to play. Boy, and a great play by Tonka. Didn't even rush here. I don't even... They might have sent two guys, Tonka, just sitting back reading Devin Leary's eyes the entire way. Watch this. Not rushing, they rush to Tonka, just drifting with Devin Leary's eyes. Saw it the whole way. Not sure it would have been complete anyway. It was tight coverage. But a couple big plays by Tonka down the stretch in South Carolina. In a do or die situation for bowl eligibility, is going to check the first box. A few extracurriculars after the final snap at Shane Beamer's November Magic continues. Back to back wins against Kentucky for Shane Beamer in South Carolina. Four handshakes. Beamer's got to clean some things up there at midfield as he looks for Stoops. An emotional game from the start. And South Carolina, generally speaking, is going to end it with smiles on their faces. Well, this South Carolina defense, a bunch of dudes making plays in a family win for South Carolina, just getting their hand on the ball. And a few batted balls tonight. That one, the biggest of them all by Tonka Hemingway. But the coverage on the back end, sticking to Kentucky receivers that entire drive. Wow, what a win for South Carolina and Shane Beamer. When we were walking into the stadium this morning, Hunter Beamer saw Cole yell, hey, Uncle Cole. Gave him a hug, and Cole said, maybe we'll see a post game. He will. He's with Hunter and Shane. Get nephew in here. Get, it, get, get him in here. There he is. Coach, you talked about your team having to fight back, battle back from adversity. Big players make big plays in big games. Spencer Rattler, six for six. Xavier to get three catches, a touchdown pass on that drive to go up. Huge. 
It was ugly um, for a lot of the game. Obviously, offensively, that's a good defense. And and um, but at the end of the day, our defense played their butts off. They've been criticized all year. I mean, what a game they played. And then at the end of the night, as ugly as it was, your two best players on offense, Spencer Rattler and Xavier Leggett, make a big time play right there. You, you were visibly frustrated telling us stories about the amount of, you went 13 quarters without getting a turnover. That was the difference in the game tonight. Huge. And it was extra effort. I mean, Nick made a heck of a play down there. Jalen Kilgore's effort over there. Uh, pass rush. What an awesome performance by our defense. But, man, our whole team. I mean, it did. We were sitting there two and six, Cole. And everybody had us counted out. Including, no, including him. Including him, probably, yeah. <laughs> but nobody can, nobody ever, 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 ever can question the fight of this team and the culture in this program. That's a big time freaking performance right here. And thanks to our fans also. I got one more for you, Coach. I just want your reaction to this. It's Clemson week, and you need one more to be bowl eligible. We need to play a lot better on offense. Uh, it's what you want. They got a great team. They had a heck of a win today. They're playing their best ball right now. They got to come into this stadium next Saturday night. It's going to be a rocking environment. But if we don't play better up front on, on the offense, it's going to be it's going to be hard because that's a uh, that's a pretty freaking salty defense we got coming in here next week too. Thank you, Coach. Congrats. Thank you, guys. Shane Beamer, South Carolina, with his family waiting. The huge win. Spencer Rattler, another big game. The defense coming through time after time tonight. Forcing three Kentucky turnovers and then a turnover on downs to close the game. You know, so much in college football is based on perception and how a fan base feels about the program. Let's just suspend Kentucky's discussion right now because that's all the other side of the coin. But for South Carolina and Shane Beamer, they have a chance to go into the biggest game of the year with an opportunity to achieve a goal. And despite all the injuries they've been through, Things are moving in the right direction for this team. Resilience and leadership. And I think you saw that from this entire team, the leadership from guys like Spencer Rattler and Xavier Leggett down the stretch. And I know Coach Beamer's being a coach there. He's saying, hey, we didn't play great on offense. We can play better. But hey, when Spencer's playing like that and when Xavier Leggett makes plays like that down the stretch, you always have a chance. Defense was the key tonight. They were able to stymie that Kentucky offense, get the takeaways when they needed them. And now one win away from the postseason. This was hard fought battle on both sides with a lot of emotion. And Carolina comes out on top 17 to 14. That's a story from Columbia. Let's get you to the studio. Here's Dari. All right, Tom, guys, thank you all very much. And uh, yeah, great performance. Defense stood up, got the turnovers it needed. And South Carolina, after losing seven of eight against Kentucky, has now beaten them in back-to-back -back seasons. Kentucky, meanwhile, after the 4-0 start, has lost six, or rather five of their 